Hi everyone, welcome back to iBuff ACC channel. For the past decade, Apple was using Intel CPUs in their Macs lineup, and some of the hardware found on the Macs main logic board can also be found in desktop PCs. From a hardware perspective, they are almost basically the same. They have the same Intel CPU, using the same AMD or Nvidia GPUs, the same platform controller hub chipset, and the same Broadcom airport card, and many more except Macs were configured with a different firmware and software to run the Mac OS. Even though they share the same hardware architecture, all Intel-based Macs never come with the PCIe expansion slot that most desktop PCs have. Unless you're using the Mac Pro series which people generally use now, that is Mac Pro 5.1 and 7.1. For the rest of the machines, Apple removed the PCIe expansion slot by soldering the PCIe devices directly on the main logic board to save space and cost, at the same time limiting the expandability of these machines. For desktop PC users, this PCIe expansion slot gives you a freedom in terms of upgradability or simply because you just want to replace that GPU. So our goal in this video today is to explain how we're able to put back the PCIe expansion slot that Apple removed so we can connect any PCIe devices that we need. If you haven't watched our modified 2012 MacBook Pro beats the M1 Mac Mini in terms of video rendering in Final Cut Pro, you can click here so you won't miss it. Let's take this logic board for A12 86 2012 MacBook Pro as an example. This is what unmodified main logic board looks like. Give your attention to these four green chipsets named CPU, PCH, GPU, and Thunderbolt 1 chip. The CPU and PCH used for this 2012 MacBook Pro is from the Intel third generation of Ivory Bridge mobile family. So this is the block diagram for mobile Intel HM77 Ivory Bridge Express chipset. We're going to fade out other components for now, and we will move the CPU and PCH to their respective positions in the block diagram. The CPU has 16 PCIe lanes with PCIe 3.0 and the CPU communicates with the PCH via direct media interface. For this specific CPU, Intel has given flexibility to motherboard manufacturers on how to utilize these 16 PCIe lanes. Well, in this case, we need to look at this logic board from a manufacturer's standpoint. So now we have three options. The first one is either you use all the 16 PCIe lanes as a single port and connect it to a single GPU so the GPU will have a full bandwidth speed for 16 PCIe lanes. Or the second option, you can turn on the bifurcation switch to divide the single port to dual ports PCIe X8 so you can connect two GPUs simultaneously. This configuration is the one that we used to connect dual GPU to our 2011 iMac in our last video as we connected the first 8 lanes to the GTX 765M and the rest of the 8 lanes to the RX 5700 XT. This configuration was also quite popular back then in 2013 for connecting two GPUs for SLI or Crossfire setup. But for this 2012 MacBook Pro, instead of connecting the secondary GPU, Apple connected the second PCIe port to Thunderbolt 1 which only utilized the first 4 PCIe lanes and the remaining 4 lanes were left unused. The final option that we have is we can set the bifurcation switch to further divide this PCIe X8 port into dual ports PCIe X4. So ideally, we can connect Thunderbolt 1 at the first 4 lanes and another 1 NVMe SSD to the last 4 lanes here. But unfortunately, the last 4 PCIe lanes that we described here were buried underneath the CPU and it's not accessible unless we desolder the CPU. So our options to manipulate these PCIe lanes are limited to what had been designed by the Apple engineers. And since our GPU GT650M here was dead, we simply removed the GPU using a BGA machine and replaced it with our specially designed PCB adapter named X Kepler, which is carefully designed to have the same footprint and size as the Nvidia GT650M. This X Kepler adapter has 0.5mm solder balls at its bottom layer that have to be aligned on the Nvidia footprint to extract signals from each of the PCIe pads because these pads were initially made to be soldered directly to the NVIDIA GT650M. So basically, we are transforming these dead-end solder pads to another PCIe transmission line that we're able to manipulate depending on what we need. All the extracted signals are then rerouted to the IPEX female connectors at the top of the PCB, then the signals are then channeled through the IPEX high-speed cable to another specially designed distribution board where we actually solder the PCIe X8 expansion slot. Technically, all PCIe devices on the market can be plugged into this PCIe slot just like how we're able to plug in any GPUs that we need as long as the macOS and metal supports it. The X Kepler adapter needs to be installed using the BGA rework machine just like any other GPU profile. The same concept is applicable to 2011 MacBook Pro that has a dead AMD GPU but it needs a different adapter that we call the X Whistler. It has the same footprint and size with the AMD Whistler GPU while every other hardware like the iPad cable and DB board remains the same. For this 
Thunderbolt 1. Optionally, you can swap it out to M.2 NVMe port so you can plug in any NVMe SSDs widely available on the market. This requires another specially designed adapter called Nevbolt 2 that also needs to be connected to a slightly longer iPad cable to the distribution board that has an M.2 NVMe slot. It was designed to fit the footprint of the Thunderbolt 1 chip precisely. We personally don't really feel hesitant to remove the Thunderbolt 1 because currently we're able to connect Thunderbolt 3 using Gigabyte Titan Reach to the PCIe X8 slot here but we're still testing for its full functionality. The bifurcation switch here is actually just a set of 1 kilo ohm resistors that adds to the bifurcation strap in the UEFI configuration when the computer is turned on. If you study the schematics hard enough, we're pretty sure that you've seen these straps before. Usually, in desktop PC motherboard, PCIe bifurcations are enabled through the firmware in the UEFI settings but things get interesting for the Intel Macs as these bifurcation switches are totally controlled by the hardware strap. So from now on, we are able to extract any PCIe lanes from the BGA pads and we will never see these BGA pads the same way again. Let us know your thoughts in the comments and see you again in our next video at iBoFasis channel, reverse engineering at its best. Thanks for watching.